Hi there and welcome to All Knit If I Want To. I'm Andrea Mowry of Drea Renee Knits and this is a little weekly Q&A podcast where I try my best to answer some of your questions. So let's start off today with a little more show and tell. Last week I threw out a sneak peek of my new hoodie pattern that just released this week and today I'm wearing the crew neck version so I knew not everyone was gonna want to wear a hoodie yes. uh, so it's a really easy modification to just do a crew neck um, you basically do the same exact pattern it's just when you get to the neck instead of picking up for a hood you pick up for a color I am gonna ask all of you to ignore this giant crease in my sweater um, I was just teaching at a retreat a couple weeks ago and I had brought this to show the attendees as a little sneak peek and it was crammed into my suitcase with all my other samples and yarn and everything so I uh, I'm gonna wear it this way I'm not gonna worry about the fact that there's a fold in it um here so you can see it this also has a cropped body just like the hoodie but you could knit that longer you would just knit more length before separating from the yoke and it has really nice roomy sleeves for just a comfy, cozy sweatshirt, relaxed fit kind of style. And I, of course, will throw a link below to where you can find this pattern. Um, this one is knit up in Ritual Dyes Sprite in Obsidian, which is this beautiful black yarn. I will say, if you are knitting with black yarn, I recommend having a second project on the needles because it was really hard to see if it wasn't like natural light uh, at night. It gets a little trickier to knit with the black yarn, but I really love it. I haven't knit a black sweater in ages. I knit one like a little tee back like nine years ago, probably eight years ago. So it's been a long time. So I am super stoked to have this added to my wardrobe. All right, I also have one more show and tell, but maybe I'll save that till the end and we'll jump into some questions now. Also, just gonna take a quick sip of water. Excuse me, I was taking an online class the other day and throughout it, the host was sipping on her water and it just made me realize like how loud that can be. So my apologies to listen to me gulp down some water. All right, question number one. I just cast on for a comfort fade cardi, my second sweater for this year's knit along. I really love the stockinette side of the yoke so far. If I want to keep the stockinette side as the right side, so the comfort fade cardi uses the reverse stockinette side, the pearl side of the fabric as the outside of the sweater. Um, is there anything special I should be aware of? I know that picking up the sleeves would be on the opposite side. Anything else? Do you think the garter stitch collar could still work or would it be better to do stockinette to match? Um, so a couple little tips for you. A, you don't have to do anything different except for making sure what you already said, you're going to go ahead and just have the right side facing when you put those sleeve stitches back on the needle to knit your sleeves. Um, you want to make sure that you are carrying your yarn up the purl side if you want the knit side to show because the instructions right now are telling you to carry it up the knit side of the fabric. One thing I would make you aware of, just in case you didn't know, I'm pretty sure I noted in the pattern, but it's been a couple of years. So just in case, uh, the reason it is the reverse stockinette is the right side of that sweater is the pearl side is because it's much better at blending the fade. So if you are fading that sweater, I would just keep that in mind that as you're working, you might end up preferring how the fade looks on that pearl side because it's going to look more cohesive. The We use stripes to fade from one color to the next. And if your yarn has any kind of contrast between the two colors you're fading, it's going to be more obvious on the knit side. So I just want to make you aware of that in case you weren't. That's the only other thing I would think of before you make that decision. Um, but otherwise, if you prefer the stockinette side, that is totally fine. And the garter stitch collar will still look great. I love a garter stitch shawl collar. You will see it in a number of my patterns and it goes with any fabric, I think. Um, so yeah, definitely will look great. I would not do a stockinette collar. A, it won't turn out correctly with the pattern um, because that stockinette fabric is going to end up wider than the garter stitch. So your dimensions are going to be off. It's also going to roll. Um, I don't think it'll lay like how you might want it to lay for that pattern. So there you go. I think that should do it and good luck whatever you decide. 
The next question. I will be starting a stranded knit cardigan. Sorry, I just realized. Oh no. Shoot. Did I forget to do one of the questions? Uh-oh. I'm realizing I have a question here from last week. Hmm. This is one of those times where I probably should restart. <laughs> but I'm just going to go with it. So let's keep going. Okay. Um. I think I remember the question that I was trying to put in here. So we're just going to wing it. I'm going to do it right now because I can't believe I must have just forgotten to copy and paste it. Um, this is how it goes. I don't know if I want to. Okay, so it's going to be. Okay. Um, so next question. I will be starting a stranded knit cardigan pattern. I purchased 100% sport weight wool as the main color and marled superwash fingering weight wool for the contrasting colors. I wasn't able to find a marled 100% wool fiber in a sport weight that I could afford, so I had to buy the superwash fingering weight and we'll hold it double. My question is, will I encounter any issues while watching, knitting, and blocking with the two different types of fiber, non-superwash and superwash. Is there any information I should know before beginning this project? Um, so yes, a couple things. The number one thing that stood out to me is you are substituting two strands of fingering weight for one strand of sport weight, and that is not an equal thickness that you're going to end up with depending on how heavy that fingering weight yarn is. So you have very, blah, 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 blah. we're just on a roll to Day. Fingering weight yarns are not all created equal. Um, there are going to be some that are going to be on the lighter side, some are going to be on the heavier side. But in general, I would start by swatching a single strand of that fingering weight with your sport and see how that works up in your swatch and see if you like the fabric it creates. Um, you are using the finger, fingering weight, I don't know why that's tough for me today, uh, for the contrasting color. So I think you're going to be fine with a single strand. Two strands is really going to equal closer to a DK weight yarn, which is going to be heavier than your main color sport weight. That's why I'm recommending that. And I have done quite a few, um, sweaters, cardigans, etc., in sport weight yarns. And I have often mixed a sport weight and a fingering weight with color work and it's been fine. So I would start with this one strand. Um, from there, as far as the non-wash, reset on this Friday. <laughs> Calming breath. As far as the superwash versus non-superwash, I really wouldn't worry too much about it. I think you're going to be just fine. Um, I'm curious if you're staking this project. I still think you're going to be just fine, but one thing you might want to take into consideration is some people, if they are going to be staking a superwash yarn, prefer to reinforce with a sewing machine if you have one available to you. Um, but I have steeked superwash yarn using just a crochet reinforcement and just been and been just fine. That's just something to keep in mind. Um, but otherwise, I wouldn't worry about it. I think you're going to be good to go. So I hope that helps and that it turns out great. Okay, I am going to jump to. Oh no, that is there. Never mind. Okay. I've been reflecting on the hand net sweaters I've made so far and which styles I like to wear the most. I realized I prefer a pretty tight crew neck or mock neck compared to a wider neckline. And I'm looking for some advice on how to adapt patterns to suit this preference. As an example, I recently finished knitting the stone crop pullover. And while I'm mostly very pleased with the outcome, if I were to knit it again, I would want a tighter neckline. Uh, ba -ba -ba. One thought I had would be to cast on fewer stitches for the neckband and then do an increase round before starting the yoke chart. But I'm worried this would cause the fabric to bunch at the neck because I would be increasing too fast at the beginning of the yoke. 
If I did try to cast on fewer stitches for the neck, would there be a better place to make up for the reduced stitch count at the top of the yoke so that the sweater still fits me in the bust? How would you approach this problem in a top-down raglan sweater? So, my, I think the easiest thing to do would be to actually knit a wider neckband. I also prefer tight-fitting necks. Um, I don't, I just generally feel more comfortable, cozy, and I like how they look um, with a tighter kind of crew neck. So, I have a couple of recommendations for you. A really easy one is to double how long that collar is. So I love a two inch collar. This is a two inch collar. If this was only one, you can see how it would be more open. Um, so try to do a two inch collar. That might be just the trick to help fix those and you don't then have to fudge any numbers. Another idea would be skip the collar altogether. Cast on the amount of stitches that it recommends, but skip the ribbing part. Use your main fabric needle, not your ribbing needle, and go right into the pattern. Then at the end, go back, pick up your stitches, and knit your collar. What that's gonna do is a couple things. One, your collar's not gonna have as much of a tendency to stretch out from the weight of the sweater because that cast on edge uh, combined with picking up those stitches is going to reinforce that area. So it just doesn't allow for the sweater to stretch as much, as much which is going to give you a tighter neckline. Also, it is going to give you the opportunity for adaptability, again, without having to worry about fudging those yoke numbers. So, and this would work for raglan or round neck. <laughs> uh, round neck? Round yoke. Woo. Okay. Um, so what you would do is go back. I would start by even picking up the recommended number of stitches still. Again, knit it maybe a little bit longer. You go one and a half inches, two inches, etc. See how you like that. Bind it off or try it, throw it on to some waist or something so you can try it on and see what you think. And then if you don't like it, the nice thing is you can just tear it out and try again because you're just picking up into that edge. So you don't have, it's just a fuss-free kind of way to try out different options and see what works best for you. If it's still a little bit too big for your liking, you could, again, do two different things. You could either pick up fewer stitches to tighten up that neck, or you could pick up the amount of stitches called for in the pattern, but then you could do a decrease row to start tightening it up. You could even knit an inch and then do some decreases and knit another inch. The only thing you have to think about is if you decrease further in um, to your collar, you're going to notice that it's going to affect your ribbing pattern if the collar's in ribbing. So I would kind of try the first options first by just knitting this longer or picking up fewer stitches to see how that works out for you. Um, but you could even pick up and then immediately on the first row, decrease out some of those stitches and then go into your ribbing pattern. So I hope those tips help. Next question. I'm a newish but avid knitter since the pandemic. Welcome to the club. You were one of the first designers I discovered, and I love how understandable your patterns are for knitters of all levels. Thank you so much. I love woolly wools, and I feel pretty confident in determining gauge with non-superwash. However, I feel like superwash is a whole different ballgame. I am currently knitting your Comfort Fade Cardi, and I'm wondering if I should take into account the possibility that the length will grow when blocked as I decide how long to knit the body and sleeves. I knit and blocked a swatch, but I feel like it underestimates, underestimates how much a full garment can grow. I have been burned before. Should I knit to a shorter length than specified if using superwash? Superwash? So, yes, a superwash yarn is generally going to grow quite a bit more than a non-superwash wool yarn. It just doesn't have the bounce back because it doesn't have those scales to grab onto each other anymore like a non-superwash yarn would. So it's so great that you did your swatch. It sounded like you had measured before and after to see how much it would grow, but I agree the challenge there is, well, how do I know once it's the full weight of a sweater, 
is it going to grow more or less um, than what my swatch told me, generally more. So the nice thing is if you are using a superwash yarn in a pattern that calls for a superwash yarn, you shouldn't need to change anything. That pattern's already accounted for that growth and you should be good to go. But so if you are substituting and the original pattern called for a non-superwash yarn, that's where you're going to want to be really careful because you probably are going to end up with a couple extra inches of length. The good news is if you are working a top down pattern, such as the Comfort Fade Cardi, what you can do is you can knit it to where you think you're going to want it or to where the pattern tells you, throw it onto waist yarn and go ahead and block it or even just steam block it and see how much growth you have before finishing and binding off. If it goes to the length you like, then you know, okay, I'm going to stop here. Um, otherwise you can throw back on the needles and continue. So that's what I would do for that pattern. The sleeves definitely grow a bit. Um, I would make sure too, though, once you have blocked it and you're laying it out to dry, don't tug, especially on the sleeves, because what can happen, especially with a yarn like Superwash that can grow a decent amount, and I will say not all Superwash are created equal. Some grow more than others. I've definitely used woolier Superwash yarns and other ones that are so soft and drapey that they tend to grow a bit more. It kind of depends what else may have been combined with those fibers, um, such as like an MCN, a merino cashmere nylon, I find can have quite a bit of growth because of that cashmere. It's just really soft and it just kind of opens up where I've used some that are just straight up super washed 100% wool. And sometimes those are a little bit more grabby still, even though they are a super wash yarn. Um, so just take care, especially with those sleeves, because what happens is if we do let the weight of the water yank or if we pull on it ourselves as we're laying it out to dry what can happen is because it has that tendency to want to grow as it grows longer it goes in with lies so you might then feel like oh my sleeves are kind of tight now or the body's a little slimmer than i expected and that's just because as something grows lengthwise it's going to narrow in because that's what's happening to the fabric so just something to consider as you are blocking your sweater um but you could also just something to have tucked into the back of your mind. Even if you have already bound off, you've already bound off the body and the sleeves, whatever, you wet block it, everything's done. You try it on and you're like, oh, it grew more than I wanted it to. Again, it's a top down sweater. Just undo your bind off, unravel a bit to, you know, put it back on your needle and then knit it to the length that you would prefer. So just keep that in your mind that it's not permanent. And knitting, unless you've steeped it, generally speaking, you can tweak it. It's a little rhyme I didn't even mean to do. All right, so we are a question short this week uh, because I just somehow managed to do that. It happens. <laughs> But the good news is I have show and tell, so we'll do that now. So sadly, as I've been getting back to work, I've had no time for spinning. It's just part of life. You know, it ebbs and flows. We can't always do all of the many things we wish we could do. So I have been missing spinning, but the good news is I've been knitting with my hands spun. So right now I am working on my DRK Everyday Cowl in my hand spun. So this is the hand spun I'm using. This was a special colorway from Hello Yarn. I think I've shown this before. Here's it in the skein. That I really hope they bring back someday because I love it. Um, but it was really fun during our retreat, Knit Ventures with Candace and Rachel from the Farmer Starter Fibers and Ritual Dyes. We thought it would be fun to do kind of a little retreat knit along. So a bunch of us cast on the DRK everyday cowl to knit while we were there. And it was so fun watching everybody's grow. Some people fish. See, look how cute this would be with the sweater. Ah! Um, so it was really fun. A couple people finished it while we were there. And I can't wait to finish mine. And my hands fun. And then... I so we snapped a couple beach pictures of Rachel Candace and I all wearing our traveler hoodies and Rachel actually knit a different size than I did and hers is a little smaller it's a little more cropped a little bit slimmer 
and she knit a size down for me and now I kind of want to knit that size too because it's fun that I think multiple people like any given person could wear multiple sizes in this pattern because of the positive ease so I give an ease range from six to ten inches and what that means is when you are looking at your body measurement so a lot of times we go by the bust measurement just because tends to for a decent amount of us be one of the larger circumferences of our body you could also measure if you if your belly is a larger circumference than your bust you could always measure there too and use that as a point to decide your size but the what you would want to take when picking sizes generally is your full bust measurement and then you would look at how much ease is recommended in the pattern so for instance i have about a 35 inch bust it varies depending on what time of the month it is. Um, but 35 is a good average for me. So this pattern recommends 6 to 10 inches of ease. So for my 35 inch bust, what I would want to do is add 6, which would be 41 inches or 10 or anywhere in between. But I'm just going to use the end caps to make it easy. So 35 plus 10 would be 45. So what I would do is I would go look then at the finished measurements, which are on page two of the details, or you could look at the schematic. And that the finished measurements are talking about what the actual sweater measures. And so from there, I can pick, okay, do I want to go closer to the 41 inch? area and have it be a little smaller. So for me, I would go for size two, which is 42 inches. So I would just round up to the closest size I could get to that number. Or do I want to go closer to the 10 inch positive ease? So I said that would be 45 inches. So I think for the pattern, I think size three is 46. So again, I'm jumping up by an inch. Um, so and depending on what week it is in the in the month, uh, 46 might be 10 inches of positive ease because I fluctuate between a 34 and a 36 inch bust. So that's how I could kind of pick, okay, do I want to do size two or size three? And really from there, I brought my hoodie and we had a whole range of body sizes there and almost everybody tried it on. Um, and it fit in all different ways. And a lot of people who may have chosen a bigger size or a smaller size were like, oh, I actually like this amount of ease. So I just like to point that out because it's kind of, it really comes down to at the end of the day, I think it's really easy to look at a pattern and look at the photo and then just kind of be like, okay, I'm just going to knit that size. And sometimes we don't take a step back and do any critical thinking of like, well, but what actually reflects my style? What would I actually like to wear? And so it was fun seeing Rachel in the other size than from what I knit and being like, oh, actually, I would also like that size. So long story long, I am also planning to spin more of this very fun, bright, right yarn this is from wound up fiber arts and it is the colorway lightning bug and originally i was thinking of using this for the weekend or knit along but i decided not to because then i you, you all saw if you've been following along here you have seen my journey through all of the different uh yarns i was spinning trying to figure out what i wanted to use for my weekend or spin um but this just happens to be a pretty perfect I think substitute for the yarns I used and I have more of this fiber I have enough to spin up um to knit one of these and I want to do another hoodie I think although like as I'm wearing this I'm like ooh, ooh but I love that hoodie so I am going to do another hoodie uh but anyways I'm hoping that once I have a little more time to get back on my wheel this is my plan is to spin up more of this and knit another hoodie in a different size so that'll be really, really fun. So those are my fun projects that I'm working on. I also have another pattern, you guys, you can't quite see it, but I have a pattern drying down here that I need to finish up really quick because it's going to come out in just a couple weeks here. Um, so, but all I have to do is the little finishing touches. It's pretty much done. And then I have a couple new sweaters going on the needles and yeah. It's really fun. So what do you have on your needles? Have you been spinning? Are you knitting? Are you weaving? What is filling you up right now? Do you find, I would be curious, I would love to hear from y'all, if you find that as the seasons shift, 
what you want to focus your time on shifts as well. Oftentimes when I get to spring, I want to do all the sewing. And I really have found that I pretty much always sew during the spring. Every once in a while, I'll get my bee, I'll get a bee in my bonnet later in the year for like, oh, I really want to make this specific thing to wear for this specific event. And I will jump back on my sewing machine. But there's something about springtime that just makes me want to sew all the things. And I usually bust out a few things. And then as the summer progresses, I get back into my spinning. I, I'm sure it's also prompted by all the fun things people do. Like there's Me Made May in the spring. That probably kicks off my wanting to sew. And then there's Tour de France. Um, not Tour de France. I mean, there is Tour de France, but Tour de Fleece as a spinners are really excited about. And that happens in spring as well into summer. Is it summer? Is it July? I think it was July last year or end of June. I'll have to look that up. So that usually gets me like way back into, oh, I'm going to spin all the things. So now that I am kind of getting back into the flow, I've got to rework out, okay, how can I still make time for all those little extra things I love to do? And yeah, so I have another work trip coming up. And when I get back in May, I'm hoping to treat myself with some spinning time and just knitting all the things. So I guess that's all. I mean, even forgetting that one question, I can't believe I did that. I still managed to fill up a decent chunk of time. So thanks for bearing with me and my technical difficulties and the fact that this girl just does not edit her videos. Uh, but I would love to hear what you're making, what you're excited about. Again, it's not too late to join the DRK March to May knit along, especially if you maybe want to try knitting the Traveler. Um, we would love to see you over there if you haven't joined already. And I will be back next week with another video. I hope you will be too. I would love it if you wanted to like and subscribe. That way you will know when I post another one of these videos. I also post knitting tutorials. A couple new ones came out this week that are helpful for the hoodie. Um, so you can find those. I have a whole playlist for knitting tutorials. But again, if you subscribe, you'll get a notification whenever I have a new one. So some people love to know. Um, when there's a new one out. This one does German short rows and I cords. So if you want to check those out, you can find them on my channel. But otherwise, I hope to see you next time. I hope you have a fantastic weekend making something you love and tell me all about it. All right. Bye.